And thank you for being here today, Chairman Powell. I would like to focus my uh, questions today uh, <clears throat> primarily on preparing for the next downturn, whether it be three years from now, five years from now, whenever it comes. Historically speaking, is the, is the uh, Federal Reserve positioned as well as it has been positioned in past recessions when the Federal Reserve was the primary uh, go-to agency where uh, the federal government said, you know, we need help from you to, to stimulate the economy. Are we positioned there or are we out of position? Well, um, if you look at post-war, typical post-war recessions where the, what the Fed has done is it's cut interest rates <clears throat> and it, on average, those, those, the amount of those cuts has been 5% or so. So with the federal funds rate having peaked at about 2.4% and now being at about a little above 1.5%, we don't have that kind of room. And there are a couple of reasons for that. Just if you look at the longer-term interest rates, which are not directly affected much by our policy, they've just been declining for 40 years now. <clears throat> and that is because of inflation being lower and under control and less volatile. And also just the aging demographics means higher saving, means more savings relative to investment, and that puts downward pressure on interest rates. So I think the new normal now is lower interest rates, lower inflation, probably lower growth. And you're seeing that all over the world, not just in the United States. You're seeing it to a much greater extent in many parts of the world than we're, we're seeing it here. So knowing that, <clears throat> that is one of the main reasons we have really the basic reason why we are having this public review of our monetary policy framework to see if there are ways we can um, alter our, our strategies, our tools, and our communications in ways that would make us more effective in this world where we're, where we're too close, closer than we would like to zero when we kind of run out of options. So uh, that's one thing. Fiscal policy <clears throat> will also be important, though. I mean, I think from the standpoint of monetary policy, we're, we're looking hard at ways to make sure that we, that we can use our tools even after rates go to zero. Ultimately, fiscal policy has been a key part of the countercyclical reaction as well, though. And uh, next question, the uh, disruption in the re repo market that took place in September. <clears throat> anticipated, not anticipated? Um, do you anticipate keeping uh, the expansion at, at the level it is until you're sure that won't happen again? Well, so anticipated or not, um, it's a different world post-crisis, and really because of all the, the expansion in our balance sheet and, and what, essentially what we've done now is we've now required financial institutions to, to have a lot more liquidity on their balance sheet so that the Fed doesn't have to run in and, and uh, with, with our own liquidity. So that's, and that's, a, I think, a big benefit to the financial system. But a lot of that liquidity is held in our reserves. We used to manage uh, the interest rate by, by keeping reserves scarce, and we had a total of $20 billion. Right now, we have in excess of 1.5 trillion in reserves, and so that means that we're <clears throat> we're trying to find that level as we allowed the balance sheet to shrink, where reserves would become scarce, and there was really no way to know. I think the data that we had suggested that we were not close to that point until September. I think um, we're still very much looking at what happened in September, but I think we learned in September that we needed to pour, to make sure that reserves didn't go under that level that we were at in mid-September, which is a little bit shy of one and a half trillion. So that's really what we're, what we're doing. It's, it's technical. I think we have it under control. We're prepared to continue to learn and adjust as we do this, but it's a, it's a process. I would say it, it's one that doesn't really have any implications for the economy or for the general public, though. Okay. Thank you. 